Thank you, Connor. Firstly, I would like to give my support for this legislation and commend the work done by Tarnisher Simon Coveney and Minister of State with responsibility for European Affairs, Helen McEntee. I personally think they've done a great job. Coming from Lindog, a border town, it is important that the common travel area, which is a long-standing arrangement between Ireland and the UK, which enables Irish and UK citizens to travel and reside in either jurisdictions without restrictions, and provide for associational rights and entitlements in both jurisdictions, remain. These rights and entitlements include access to employment, health care, education and welfare benefits. There was a commitment by all parties to the continuation of the common travel area and associated rights. And it's very important this is held. And if this is held, this would mean that across sectors, including health, there will be no change in the rights of Irish citizens and they will be able to move freely north, south, east and west, work, study and access health and social benefits in the UK on the same basis as UK citizens. Reciprocal remains will also apply to UK citizens in Ireland. Ken Cola, I think every household in the country, the main topic of conversation is the Brexit. Even when I go home tonight, the first thing my wife would say to me, Brexit, what happened today in the Brexit? Uh, especially this week, when all the people in my constituency realised that the debate had gone on the door, and in fairness, a lot of people don't understand what this debate's about. So listen, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, go through, the, go through the, the different parts of the bill and just try to explain it to myself and also to my, to my constituents. Part one of the bill provides for the title of the bill. Uh, part two deals with the healthcare arrangements between the UK and Ireland and the common travel area. Part three deals with proposals to amend the Industrial Development Act 1986 and the Industrial Development Enterprise Act 1998. This will enable Enterprise Ireland to further support businesses through investments, loans, grants, and therefore limited the negative effect Brexit has on the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable enterprises. Enterprise Ireland, as you know, Ken Cotter, do actually a fantastic job in Ireland and also do a great job in my own country of Loud. Part 4 deals with the transitional power to modify licence conditions concerning the Commission for the Utilities, Brexit and the Single Electricity Market. Part 5 deals with student supports in higher education. Commonly eligible students from Ireland who take up approved third level courses in the UK and eligible UK nationals who take up approved courses in Ireland qualify for the SUSE grants due to the UK membership of the European Union. The purpose of this part of the general scheme is to ensure continuity of commitment to maintain the right and privileges bestowed by the common travel area and eligibility for SUSE grants even in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Part 6 deals with taxation amendments to legislations, governs income tax, capital gains tax, capital acquisition tax, tax uh, stamp duty and the provision in relationship to VAT has been included. Part 7 deals with financial services. This includes introducing legislative amendments to support the implementation of the European Commission uh, equivalent decision with the Central Security Dispositionary Regulation and to extend the protection contained in the Settlement Finality Directive to Irish participants in relevant third country domicile settlement schemes. Part 8 deals with the financial services which, which makes amendments to the, to the European Union Insurance and Reinsurance Regulation 2015 and the European Union Insurance Distribution Regulation 2018. This will provide for a temporary runoff regime, which, subject to a number of conditions, will enable insurance company undertaking intermediate to continue the fulfilment contractual obligation to their Irish customers for a period of three years after the date of the withdrawal of the UK from the EU. However, these insurance and intermediates will no longer be able to write new insurance contracts or continue insurance distributions in respect of new insurance contracts in Ireland until they, they obtain a relevant authorisation under the EU insurance supervisory regime. Part 9, this relates to ensuring that appropriate procedures and safety systems are in place where a foreign rail operator is operating a service in Ireland, and in the event of a no-deal Brexit, that the enterprise railway services will continue to operate without disruption, 
Waiver, ser waiver services are not included in this bill. And part eight of the bill also covers pilot exemption certs issued by the harbour companies. Part 10 deals with the bus and coach services. This part makes the National Transport Authority, the NTA, the compelling authority to regulate bus services between Ireland and the toll countries, when enforced by the road safety authorities and on Garden the Khan. The intention is that these heads could provide the backdrop to any further bilateral discussion to be held between the Irish and the UK government regarding arrangements to facilitate bus services. Part 11 deals with an amendment to the Social Welfare Conversation Act 2005. The aim of the suggested amendments reflect the government's commitment to maintain the common travel area between Ireland and the UK and to provide for the continuation of the relevant social welfare payments. Due to the unique nature of the common travel area between the UK and Ireland and the associated right confirmed on Irish and British citizens in each, country, in each other countries, the Convention seeks to familiarise their pre-existing common travel area social protection arrangement in a documented agreement. Part 12 deals with the amendment of the Protection of Employers and Sovereignty Act 1984. The draft withdrawal agreement between the EU and the UK provides for the continuation of arrangements to deal with cross-border insolvencies including the protection of employees in the event of, an, of a no-deal crisis, the UK will, will enact draft regulations to provide for pan-European sovereignties. In this case, the situation of employees will depend on the, on the particular contract in each member state. Part 13 deals with the amendment of the Inter Interpretation Act 2005. This will seek to address the potential vacuum in the event of a no-deal Brexit scenario by making amendments to the, to the Extradition Act 1965 to allow the extradition between Ireland and the UK at the request of the Minister for Justice and Equality. Part 14 deals to amend the Immigration Act 2004 to give an immigration officer the power to take fingerprints of a person for the purpose of a personal application for an Irish visa or transit visa where well, she thinks it is necessary to ensure the integrity of the common travel area. Part 15 of the bill is, 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 is tilted miscellaneous, but is a material the same as Part 13 and deals with changes to the Interpretation Act 2005. Part 16 of the amendment uh, to the Data Protection Act 2018 are not included in the bill, and Part 17 of the exchange for the immigration data with the UK is also not included in the bill. Kaila, a big concern among my constituents in County Lodge is the introduction of the International Motor Insurance Card, which is the Green Card. Uh, as you know, coming from County Lodge yourself, uh, uh, we, we, we've all got a lot of family, a lot of people at work, uh, the, the, the travelling to and fro is unreal. Uh, the Good Fight Agreement was probably one of the best things that ever hit this country. Like, I grew up in the, in the 60s and 70s, and I know what the trouble was like. And when, when the Good Fight Agreement came, like, it really helped everybody on both sides of the border. And the last thing we want to do is, is to see a border coming there again. Like, th nobody wants to see the customs depots there. Nobody wants to see the guards one side and the army officers the other side. Nobody wants to see that at all because the last 20 years has been very, very peaceful for everybody in Ireland and especially the people along the border. Uh, as, a, as an ex-soldier myself, I, I know what it's like to, to patrol between Omeet and uh, Colleville. There's 38 border crossings. I'm familiar with the 38. I believe now there's an awful lot more than 38 since, since the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, the people of Ireland didn't look for this. In fairness, like, it, 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 it's the UK that, that, wants, that wants to leave the EU. Uh, and I, I think, in fairness to Tahana Shokovny, he, he said many of the time he wished this could all go back to where it was and like, the relationship we have. Uh, we seem to have an awful lot to lose. And, uh, Minister, I know you only walked in there. I, I commend yourself and, 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 and Minister McEntee for the fantastic work you've done so far. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of faith in you. And, and in fairness, you, you never once refuse to talk to the media. You never once refuse to tell the people what was going on. And I think it's very important going forward that, that we continue this here. Uh, I'm just, just going to say uh, a lot of people in, in, in constituencies are worried. They're scared. The 29th of March is fa fast approaching. Uh, nobody knows what's going to happen. One week we hear that the, the, a deal is going to be done, the next day not a deal has been done, and then the next time we hear they're, they're looking for a referendum. Like, it, it, it's the uncertainty, and as I said to you, every household in this country, the main topic is Brexit. And in fairness to the Irish government at the moment, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't you know, shined away from this at the moment, is, and they've been up front. And 
And in fairness, it's, it's, and in fairness, we have to give respect to Micheál Martin there as well, because in fairness to Micheál Martin and, and the Fianna Fáil government, the Fianna Fáil party, they have really stood up to this at the, at the moment. And, and in fairness, they could, they could, they could have took the handy way there back before Christmas and maybe put a push there for a general election. And the next thing, we would have, have the same scenario as, uh, as uh, what they have in the UK. And I just say, and in fairness to Sinn Féin and, and in fairness to all the other parties, this, this is one thing, um, I'm a TD for the last eight years, and I think this is one thing that has really talked the whole, the whole country you know, together. And it's, 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 it's fantastic there at the moment. And all I hope is that uh, over the next few weeks or a few months, whatever it is at the moment, is that we all sit together. And the, the, the goal is to, is to look after the citizens and people of Ireland. And uh, that's it, Ken Collins. Thank you very much.